Have you ever read those headlines saying, we found new planets that could host life? Or here's a weird planet we just found someday. But how do we actually find these planets? Well, as it turns out, astronomers have come up with several methods. And although the underlying math is complicated, the basic concepts aren't. So today we'll be talking through the simple version. Imagine you're talking to a group of people, and you're trying to convince them that you just found a brand new planet. How would you do it? Well, it wouldn't hurt if you had a picture. In fact, this is the same philosophy used in the direct imaging method. Astronomers take expensive, complicated cameras on space telescopes and point them at stars. When we're taking photos of those stars, sometimes a planet appears in the image, and that counts as a discovery. But if you've ever used a camera before, like on your phone or any other device, you might know that they're sensitive instruments, especially when you're looking at a bright object. So how does that affect our observations? To get a better understanding, let's take a look at an example. In this image, we can see lots of fine details. For example, there's a field of grass and flowers in the foreground, and the background has a very detailed mountainscape. But there's still a bright star in this scene. So if we aren't careful about how we take the photo, we can end up with something that looks like this, where all of those fine details are washed out by the star's light. You can imagine how if we're trying to look at planets that are only dimly lit, it would be nearly impossible to find them in images like this. So how do we actually fix this issue? If we're looking at a star, then we can place a filter over our camera to block out some of its light. This makes it easier for us to identify any planets in the image, especially if they're orbiting close to the star and are well lit. Looking up at the night sky, you may notice stars dimming and brightening again. On Earth's surface, this is usually caused by light bouncing around in the atmosphere. But we can still see this dimming when we look at stars for a long time from space telescopes. This could be happening for many reasons, like the star's natural aging. However, in a particular case where the time between these dimming events is constant, we might be looking at something called a transit event. Here, a planet passes in front of its host star, blocking a large amount of its light. And much like how the Earth takes a regular amount of time to orbit around the Sun, these planets take a constant amount of time to orbit their host stars. This is what causes the frequent periodic dimming effect from before. So long as a planet is large enough, a space telescope can measure these dips in brightness to find them. If you've ever stood by a busy road, you've probably heard this sound. Notice how the car's horn dropped from a higher pitch to a lower one? This is an example of the Doppler effect, and it happens any time waves are emitted by a moving object, because the waves build up differently on different sides of the emitter. To understand why though, let's look at an example. Here, we can see that the waves are much more compressed on the right side of the emitter than on the left. This difference in compression causes a car's horn to sound different as it passes by you. But this effect applies to more than just sound. Light also behaves as a wave, meaning that if an object is emitting light and moving, the light they emit can compress and expand. Additionally, the light's compression affects how we perceive its color. Light waves appear bluer when compressed and redder when broadened. So if we know what a star should look like at rest, we can figure out how it's moving by observing its long-term color. For example, a star moving away from us would look redder than at rest, and a star getting closer would appear bluer. But these are still simple one-dimensional motions, and how does this relate to finding planets? Well, if a planet is massive enough, then it can cause its host star to move in a noticeable circular pattern. When looking at this star, it periodically shifts towards redder and bluer lights. The effect here is a dramatic exaggeration of what we would actually see, but it still demonstrates how, by observing these periodic color changes in a star, we can infer that a massive object is orbiting it.
One night, you look at the stars and notice a bright object moving in a circle. You confirm it's not a plane or a helicopter, you are confident it is a star. What could be causing it to move like that? Remember, if a planet's massive enough, it can cause its host star to move in large circles. But unlike the radial velocity method, the star's light isn't changing color because its motion doesn't bring it closer or further to us. Instead, astrometry relies on tracking a star's position over a long time. But every star in the sky is unimaginably far from us, so even large circular motions would look nearly imperceptible. Even here, the star's movement is too large. Until significant improvements are made in our observational instruments, this method is unlikely to find widespread use. You, me, and nearly everything else on Earth has something in common. Gravity pulls us toward the ground. If I were to throw a ball, it would still move in the same direction I threw it, but it would keep falling back to the ground. Shockingly, light can also be redirected by gravity. When light passes by massive objects, the light's path can warp and cause some weird behavior. For example, black holes can warp light so much that you can see objects on the other side. Not only that, but this warping magnifies the brightness of these obscured objects. In the case of a star, we would see its brightness increase as it passed behind the black hole and decrease once it moved further away. This weird behavior is called gravitational lensing. But what would happen if we had another black hole orbiting around the larger one? The star's light would still magnify like before, but the smaller black hole would cause a second peak in the star's brightness. The second peak tells us that another object is orbiting the larger mass and is called gravitational microlensing. We can replace these black holes with any other massive object, like stars and planets. So if we see a star's brightness peak twice as it passes behind another star, we may have just detected a planet. If there's one thing to take away from this video, it's that there are many unique ways that planets are discovered, but they aren't all equally successful. The vast majority of exoplanets have been discovered using the radial velocity and transit methods. These numbers are pulled from the NASA Exoplanet Archive, and a link will be provided in the description. However, this isn't the complete picture, as many of our space telescopes are designed for those methods. Future space telescopes, like the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, will focus on other methods, like gravitational microlensing, opening up a larger potential for discovery. But, until then, Thank you for watching.